It begins here, on the lonely outpost known as the practice team. Working to improve the weaknesses, honing the skills, developing the strengths. Good luck! Always with the dream of reaching the top. Being known as one of golf's finest. Thank you. Striving for recognition, success, perfection. 150 of the world's top golfers gathered to seek one of the sport's most sought after prizes. The 1976 Professional Golf Association National Championship. A battle in the bicentennial year that will prove to be a classic at the Congressional. The Congressional Country Club in Bethesda, Maryland, sometimes referred to as the Playground of Presidents, was prestigious host with its 58th PGA Championship. Although the course was wet after weekend rains from Hurricane Bell, it was still in good shape and extended a welcome to thousands of Washington area golf enthusiasts who would get more than their money's worth before the tournament's end. The expectant challengers were set to compete on the plush par 70 layout that usually played even longer than its listed 7,054 yards. And for the fans, one of the highlights of tournament week took place before the opening round. The Champions Clinic, featuring demonstrations by former PGA winners and this year hosted by Lee Trevino, as introduced by PGA President Henry Poe. Thank you very much. If you can see the drive that Gary Player has with his legs, and if you can watch his right shoulder, how fast it is. He would give one of his ranches in South Africa if he could do that on the course, though. See? <laughs> Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Sammy Sneed, one iron. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to call some shots here for Sam. I want him to... He's gonna, he said he was going to give you a little high cut. It'll land like a butterfly with sore feet. Now watch this. You see this? If you could just bottle it and sell it, you'd be all right. <laughs> I got it. I got a man here. Hell, I don't even... I got to go on this other side. 63, 71, 73, 75. What the hell did you... Oh, this is 76. You haven't played yet. <laughs> You want me to talk about this club? No, I tell you, I can talk about that club as much as you can, but I just want you to tell the people how you pick up your left heel and fly an elbow and still win everything. <laughs> but I think the prime thing about a driver is, that, is to be smooth with it, take as full a possible swing as you can uh, possibly make. Boy, you're in deep trouble. You're like me, baby. You start hitting it straight, we can't break 80. Hey. <laughs> Day one of the championship, hot and muggy, with temperatures due to soar into the 90s. Fans poured out to see the familiar faces of the well-known veterans and some exceptional play by aggressive newcomers, such as Dr. Gil Morgan, who recorded an admirable 66. Hometown favorite Lee Elder fired a two under par 68 to share third place with Charles Cootie and Jerry McGee after one round. U.S. Open champ Jerry Pate was a stroke back along with Bob Zender, Mark Hayes, and Mike Morley, while Tom Watson joined eight others at even par. The men commanding the most ardent legions, Arnold Palmer and defending PGA champion Jack Nicklaus, finished the day at one over par. Nicklaus, with only one tour victory to his credit in 1976, was seeking to end his drought with a fifth PGA title. Expecting Congressional's demanding roughs and grains would take its toll of the early leaders. Demanding roughs and grains would take its toll of the early leaders. But what really captured attention that first day was Tom Weiskopf's birdie binge, netting a near record 31 for the front nine. 
31. 31, here's a great one. Watch it. 31. Tom Weisskopf has been noted for his consistent inconsistency. But this day his game was near perfect as he shot five birds and an eagle two on the 456 yard six, holding a six iron from 170 yards out and only two bogeys. With his one stroke first round lead, he was understandably pleased with his performance. Well, naturally, uh, to shoot a 65 on a golf course like this, it's a tremendous confidence builder. I played exceptionally well today. I made a few silly mistakes, but then I, you know, offset those with some uh, very good shots. Weisskopf's caddy put that lead in proper perspective. Well, you always just try to stay in contention the first day. You got four rounds. You know, each round is important to each other, but it's nice to go off to a super start. In round one, 12 players had overcome Congressional's challenging course. Round two would have 11 contestants break par, but only one player would give a repeat performance of opening day. The course was carefully groomed for another assault and pin position strategically selected as a stiff test for the PGA's quality field. A record of more than 115,000 people would attend this bicentennial spectacle at Congressional. Throngs were not disappointed as players demonstrated delicate finesse. A thoroughly appreciative audience enjoyed the show. Driving may awe the gallery, but the short irons, the nine iron, and the pitching wedge made the game. But there were dangers, too, as a congressional club member cautioned. It's a penalty stroke all, all the way when you get in the rough. So they've got to watch that very, very closely and be careful about that. The greens are tricky, but the pros know how to putt the tricky greens. They'll do all right in the greens. And when a professional misses, he feels the pain more than we do. Body English doesn't always work. And oh, those curveballs. And the almost but not quite. Weisskopf in the water on six, double bogey. Can he please change that? For Tom Weisskopf, the sixth hole was the agony and the ecstasy. From an eagle two on the first day, Tom loses four strokes to it on the second day on his way to a disappointing 74. Renowned for his short iron play, Gary Player misses the green eight times, but still turns in a 69 and a two round total of 139 to move into a three-way tie for third with Weisskopf and Don January. Today, 1969 PGA champion Raymond Floyd picks up four strokes with a 68 and moves into contention powered by his putting. Tom Kite stands alone in second place after overcoming a round of six bogeys, four of them in a row, starting at nine and salvaging a respectable 72. The surprise of the day proved to be the steady play of Dr. Gil Morgan, an optometrist who chose to study golf balls rather than eyeballs. His 68 and two round total of 134 provides credence to his statement that he does better on the tougher courses. Halfway through the tournament, he holds a four stroke lead. The only thing hotter than Morgan was the weather. On the hot, dry course, 74 hopefuls failed to make the cut. Among them, Lee Trevino, Al Guyberger, and Tommy Jacobs. The Congressional had claimed her victims, 
and the championship was shaping up as a wide open battle. But the real winners were the fans who were quick to express their satisfaction. What do I think of the tournament? I think it's been a good tournament. A little bit hot, but they've been playing real well. Loved it. Been here every day and enjoyed every minute of it. A whole lot of shaking going on. Hey, I love it. <laughs> Man, I never had such a great time in my life. With two rounds remaining, 13 players stood at par or better. The champion was not to be discovered. I think there's going to be a close battle right down at the end, if not even a tie. Who do you think? No. Uh, Crenshaw. Hale Irwin. Dr. Gil Morgan. Watson. Mellow Bottle. I can't reveal that. That would be showing my prejudice. I love them all. Arnold Palmer is the greatest. He really is. In fact, he's up now. <laughs> Members of Arnie's army were rewarded with some vintage Palmer on the third day as he electrifies his followers with a flash of brilliance, including a 22-foot birdie on the 18th. His 68 was the best PGA Championship golf he had played in 10 years. Though realistically out of contention, his band still had hopes. The real focus of attention for the third round was twofold. The deterioration of the leaders and the weather. While the tournament directors had been fortunate earlier in the week when Hurricane Bell had only skirted the course, the weather forecasters painted a gloomy picture for the next two days. With six threesomes still on the course, play halts at 5.10 due to the rain and lightning. Sunday began overcast and threatening. The sun does not appear through the cloud cover until 9.30. It was a scrambling Sunday morning as the select field buys to capture the lead. Don January finishes at even par after three rounds. Good for third place. Tom Kite cards a 73 and goes one over for the tournament. Gary Player continues to miss the greens, but overcomes the deficit with his mastery of the wedge. He joins Kite, David Graham, Ray Floyd, and a surging Dave Stockton at a 2.11 total. Golf is a game of exhilaration and frustration. Lee Elder knows about the second part. He matches Tom Weiskopf's three-round total of 2.12, five strokes behind the leader as both he and Weisskopf fall from serious contention. Jack Nicholas is neither helped nor hindered by the rain postponement. While he wasn't too happy about waking up Sunday at 5.30 a.m. to play golf, he finishes his round at one under, only two strokes off the lead. He feels reassured and confident. As for Gil Morgan, his followers must have been doing a rain dance on Saturday because his game and lead washed away. Unable to make the easy ones, Morgan's round of five over par opens the door for one opportunistic veteran who has been solving Congressional's mysteries and moves into a two-shot lead on the pack. Charles Cootie's 76 performance on the tour has been unspectacular, but he had still placed in the top 10 in six events. Steady golf was proving to be Cootie's key to potential victory. The third round officially closes Sunday morning, and preparations were made to continue the finals, but again, Congressional is struck by heavy rains and lightning. At first delaying play, and then, after an hour, causing the entire round to be postponed. For the first time in 58 years of PGA Championship history, the deciding round would not be played until Monday. A decision that brought various reactions. What do I feel about a rain out? And, you know, it doesn't really make that much difference to me. I, I hate to miss a day of fishing. But... Monday dawns, bright and clear, and everyone looks forward to a great finish. Henry Poe, president of the PGA of America, points out why it was an even greater day to Don Pageant Sr. It must be particularly exciting to you to have your son, who is a club professional, be among the leaders here in our championship. 
for Henry Don II, it has to be a thrill for him. It is a thrill for me. I'm sure all of his club members uh, will be happy that he's been teaching them all summer and working with them. And to know that a club professional can compete against the best players in the world. And yes, we are thrilled for all of them. After 54 holes, the championship was still very much in doubt. Here it is Monday, and still 24,000 excited faithfuls return. Many to see golfing's great make his move to the winner's circle. On the tee, with a three-round total of 209, from Muirfield Village, Ohio, the defending champion, Jack Nicklaus. Nicholas is only two back and appears determined. He is unhappy with his tee shot, but he still gets his par and bides his time. But for Charles Cootie, disaster strikes quickly. After bogeying the first hole, he has a horrendous double bogey on three, dropping him from the lead and out of the championship picture. His round worsens, and he finally comes in with a 77 for a total of 284, placing him in a five-way tie for eighth place in the tournament. Australian David Graham makes his run. He's not yet won a major event on the tour, and he'd love to make this his first. But it's not to be. Graham 72 leaves him tied for fourth position. He'll not be the PGA champion this year. Dr. Gil Morgan has been the talk of the tournament for the opening rounds. When asked about his optometry practice, Morgan jokingly replies he would only work on Wednesdays because that's when all of the other optometrists were out playing golf. But the personable young doctor had suffered through a round of 75 yesterday and does the same today, fading entirely from contention after the fourth hole. Finishing with a four over 284, he too will have to wait until next year. The stage seems set for the Golden Bear. Jack Nicholas plays even par through the first four holes and suddenly finds himself in the lead when Cootie faltered. Again, however, fates turn against him. First with a double bogey at six, when he puts his second shot in the water, and later at 12 and 14, where he cards bogeys. Nicholas will not win his fifth PGA Championship, and will have to settle for a fourth place tie. Now it is Don January's turn. The struggle for supremacy seems to be a showdown between former PGA champions. January, the 67 winner, was coming back from two and a half years of semi-retirement and briefly gains the lead after birdieing the eighth. But he loses control as quickly as he gained it with a bogey on 10. It appears January's chances are fading. The steadiest and perhaps the most overlooked performer was 1970 PGA champion Dave Stockton. Now with a bird on 11, he steps into the lead and suddenly is two strokes up on January after 12. Meanwhile, back in the pack, Ray Floyd is putting together a late rush of birdies, coming through on 15 and 16 to end the tournament at two over par. All week, the players have been saying even par could win the championship. Floyd was hoping a 282 would take it. Now he can only wait for the final two groups to finish. In classic style, the race tightens once again when suddenly erratic irons bring Stockton bogeys on 13 and 14. Floyd continues to make his late bid while January hangs in close. Stockton finds himself in a position where he must settle down and shoot par or better the last three holes. By the time the final two threesomes complete 15 holes, no one is under par. Stockton, led by a slim one shot over Floyd, 
and January. On 17, Don January apparently falls out of the race with a catastrophic bogey. But his second shot at 18 pulls up 12 feet from the pin to put him in birdie territory and give him new life. If he sinks this, he'll join Floyd at 282. January's putt set up the possibility of a three-way tie if Stockton bogeys 18. Dave Stockton wants none of that. He has to get down in four. Using a three-wood off the tee for greater control, he follows up with the three again, leaving the ball 75 feet short of the pin. The championship is in his hands. He has to get close with this shot. It pulls up 15 feet short. He needs this ever lengthening putt to win. And in the 58 year history of the tournament, no one has ever won the title on a long putt. There's no doubt about the pressure. Stockton had told his wife on the 10th hole that he was preparing his acceptance speech. But after 71 holes of fierce competition, after navigating over 28,000 yards of one of the country's most difficult courses, the 1976 PGA National Championship will be decided on these interminable 15 feet of nature's carpet. Stockton's butt is dead center. He has his second PGA title, his 11th Tour Triumph, and add $45,000 to his career earnings of nearly $900,000. The longest regulation PGA National Championship has ended. Truly a classic at the Congressional. I don't believe in the history of the PGA Championship we have had a more exciting finish from the about the ninth tee to the 18th green, there were some eight or nine players who had a grand opportunity of winning. And certainly our winner showed his great ability by coming into the final two holes and making two great fours in order to be the champion. And at this time, it's my great pleasure to present to you the 1976 PGA champion, Dave Stockton.